Hi everyone, my name is Suroj Lamichani. Today I will be presenting our final project for Deep Neural Network class. We are team Yuziang and our team members are Yuziang Wu, Suroj Lamichani and Ryan Wardle. Our competition name is Wadwani AI Volume Counting Challenge by Jindi. Let's start with some acronyms here. ABW is American Ball Ohm and PBW is pink ball ohm and MAE is mean absolute error which is the evaluation matrix for this competition. Now I will go more over how this competition is started and why this is important. The goal of this competition is to count the number of pink ball ohm and American ball ohm in an image. In 2017, Indian farmers lost a huge portion of their crops due to ball ohm infestation. So in 2018, they started a project to count the number of ohms in their crops. Counting the type and the number of ohms in crop helps farmers to make decisions about pesticide uses to stop the further investigation of the crops. The dataset was collected from Indian cotton farm and it contains approximately 13,000 images. The dataset consists of varieties of images. It consists of images with ohms there may be blank image without any ohms and there may be images such as selfies taken by farmers. This diversity of images really helps our classifier to train positive and negative images before counting the number of ohms in the image. For training our models, we used free version of Google Colab. We also enabled GPU hardware acceleration for training our models. Our dataset size is approximately 28 gigabytes and 13,000 images. We used about 4.8 gigabytes of RAM and 30.8 gigabytes of storage of the maximum allowable RAM and storage provided by the free version of the Google Colab. This slide shows our team performance so far. We ranked 97th in the leaderboard. The mean absolute error of our model is 6.18 and we made total five submission for this project. Now let's talk about our image pre-processing steps. The 28 gigabytes of raw images were split into training and testing folder. And in the training folder, it got further divided into positive folder and negative folder. This is needed to leverage the TensorFlow image utility to read raw image into, uh, into the collab as dataset. A negative image consists of images without ball ohms and positive image consists of a piece of paper with ball ohms in it. The competition also provides a CSV file with polygon locations of the ohms in the image. This information is only provided for positive images. For the negative image, there is no ohm type information and geometry information. In this slide, we can see CSV file with ohm type and identification of image with image ID. The original raw image dataset may contain images with random sizes. All of these images are resized to 512 by 512 pixel images for training. We used 80% of the images for training and 20% of the images for validation. In this slide, we can see our directory structure for training and testing image dataset of our model. So before training our model, we also converted our original 28 gigabytes of images to TF records files for increasing the efficiency and for reducing the size of training, testing and validation dataset. We split a training dataset to four different strats and validation and, and testing dataset consists of single strat. Using TF records, we were, we were able to reduce the 28 gigabytes of image dataset size to only about one gigabytes of data size. This really enhanced our pre-processing step. In addition to converting images to TF records, we also enhanced our data pipeline using interleaving, parsing, softling, batching, and prefetching before training the dataset.
here we can see the subplots of nine images that are taken from the first batch of training data set we can see three pieces of information for each image first we can see the image itself resized to 512 pixel by 512 pixel second we can see the label that indicates if it is positive or image positive image or negative image and we can also see the image id of the image Now let's briefly go over the architecture of our model for counting the ohms in the image. First of all, raw images are passed to the classifier. Before passing the images to classifier, the images are resized to 512 by 512 pixel image size. The classifier outputs labels for the image indicating if it contains the picture of ohms or not. If the image label is positive, it is filtered less and if the image label is negative, it is filtered more. Both positive and negative images are now passed through object detector to detect and count pink ball ohm and American ball ohm. The count and corresponding image IDs are now saved to the CSV file. After preprocessing step is complete, we applied transfer learning on Epicent Net V2B3 and use it as our classifier. We also added 2D global average pooling layer for downsampling. We also added a dense layer with segment activation for binary classification of the images. We used stochastic gradient descent optimizer with learning rate of 0.2 and momentum of 0.9. Finally, we compiled the classifier with binary cross entropy loss and accuracy as matrices for training the classifier. Now, Yuzhiang will go more about training the object detector using YOLO v2. Uh, here I borrowed one image from a paper uh, to show you uh, basically uh, without in going into details, um, the U network of YOLO version 2 is uh, you know, formed by a bunch of convolutional layer, max layer, um, max polling layer, and uh, uh, also the so-called scape layer um, and uh, uh, in our case uh, you know our image input uh, size is 512 by 512 by 3 uh, and the output of the ULO network in this case is the 16 by 16 by 5 by 7 I will explain in details about these dimensions later there are two main steps you have to uh, accomplish uh, you, have, you have to finish before uh, you know uh, the, your model is functional is one thing is uh, you know you have to build the model structure using uh, tensorflow api functional api and then uh, after that you have to load some pre-trained weights um, and uh, yulo's uh, official website ha uh, has that those weights but uh, it need to be com uh, converted to uh, the Yulo version 2, uh, I mean the, the TensorFlow uh, com compatible version. And uh, then we, uh, before we can train the uh, object detector, we have to prepare for some, uh, you know, labels because all the information was given uh, just in a, a uh, CSV, we read it in uh, as pandas data frame as our raw database. Then we have to write code to be able to uh, search for how many boxes, is, uh, you know, for all the boxes and all the uh, class of the box and uh, based on the uh, image ID. Um, because these polygons are given in a string format, and usually we don't directly work with polygon. Uh, instead, uh, we work with something called bounding box, um, and uh, mm, the bounding box uh, uh, defines, uh, in this case, uh, let me explain a little bit more on this. So, uh, essentially, uh, if you have an object on your image, uh, then the convention that we use is the y, uh, the x direction is here, the y direction is here, and then uh, we might have a 
five tor by five tor pixel image, right? So uh, the the definition of the bounding box is the bounding box uh, bounds the object, and then we have to uh, specify the left top corner, which is x mean, uh, y mean, right? And then in this case, this one uh, right corner, uh, right bottom corner is the x max as well as the uh, y max. So that's how you specify a bounding box. And you will, you will later on see there's different ways to specify uh, bounding, bo different convention to specify bounding box uh, as well. Uh, w one uh, convention that is used by uh, uh, by the so uh, Yulo is is basically uh, instead of uh, saying uh, specifying the corners, uh, you specify the center and and then you specify the uh, height and width. So that's that's another convention. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but. Essentially, uh, what we are doing here is we used a package called Shipley. Um, it, it is able to load in the polygon, which is in string format, and convert it to Shipley polygon object. And then through calling the built-in method, uh, we will be able to uh, extract the bounding box out of the polygon. Uh, and we also need to uh, be able to search the uh, raw size of the image based on their ID um, such that we can resize the bounding box because we co we converted all the uh, image into we resized the image into 5 tor by 5 tor so we have to uh, resize our uh, our box bounding box as well give me one second oh, okay um, so this is the visual illustration of what I'm talking about. Uh, basically, uh, the raw image is in you know around 3,000 by 4,000, uh, and then there is this label on top of uh, the object. And if we resize the you know the image uh, into 5 tar by 5 tar, the box uh, coordinates needs to be resized accordingly. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, you know kind of putting everything together. Uh, we read our uh, TF records through our data pipeline, and then you will get this data site. And uh, we wrote another function that convert and, and build add add more functionality on top of this uh, data site. Um, the reason for that is uh, basically if you recall the original uh, TF records uh, do not contain the box information. In in our case, we uh, after load in the uh, image, right? Uh, the only thing we got is this um, the ID of the image, and we wrote a supporting function that allow us to uh, search for uh, you know necessary information to finally get the uh, resized box, which is important for training. Uh, so. In our case, we have to write additional function to extract the box uh, and class information. Uh, and um, a little bit more on the uh, this five dimension label. Um, you know, uh, basically the first four uh, from zero to three is your resized box label. Um, you know where, where it tells where your box locate, and then uh, the uh, fourth, um, you know, or or fifth uh, or five. Um, you know, it indicates the class index. Uh, in our case, zero is reserved for no object. One is the uh, pink ballworm, and two is the American ballworm. In this case, it's a two because this is an American ballworm. After, if you are able to label everything correctly and plot the box with, uh, you know, non-zero uh, uh, class index, then um, it, it, it will show you this image that uh, um, each have the correct box labeled um, at correct place. Now, uh, we just read in the box information, right? Um, however, we are not able to train the neural network yet because uh, 
um, those information needs to be transferred uh, to a format that that is compatible for uh, with the output of the Euro Euro version two. So its output is sixteen by sixteen by five by seven dimension, and sixteen by sixteen is actually a, a cell grid, um, and the five is the um, you know number of bo anchor boxes per cell, um, and uh, we will talk about anchor box a little bit later. Uh, seven is the dimension for each anchor box label. Um, so uh, essentially, our image is a five by uh, five tar by five tar pixel by pixel image. Uh, in this case, you know, uh, you will have this uh, sort of uh, 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 you know we we overlay a sixteen by sixteen grid on top of this uh, input image. Uh, and then um, Euro's algorithm essentially, if you use Euro version one, it is only able to uh, detect one object per uh, grid style. Um, and uh, um, in this case, for Euro version two, uh, one improvement it made is this uh, anchor detector, uh, where you can specify five different uh, anchor detector uh, per cell per grid style, so that uh, you can detect five. Uh, object if uh, those five objects end up um, being assigned to the same uh, grid style, but the uh, use of anchor box is really um, you know I'll explain a little bit more there. is is really is really enable us to detect different uh, um, different shapes of the object uh, more easily. Uh, maybe not in this project, but uh, when you are in a car. Or, or pedestrian um, detection problem. If you have a car, you know your bounding box um, shape. If you define as such, it might have a higher chance to uh, capture, you know, a, a, a car. Right. Um, however, if you have a, a pedestrian, you might want a, a, a bounding box or an anchor box that is a. Uh, uh, in this shape, in, in this type of shape, which has lower width and uh, higher uh, height. Um, and, uh, you know, this bounding box really uh, is predefined in terms of shapes, and you have to specify it in your code. Um, and what I'm talking about the grid is uh, we, we divided this, um, you know, I'm just drawing for that illustration purpose. There is 16 grid, so each each grid unit is actually five tor uh, divided by sixteen, right? Instead of one pixel, so it is uh, whatever this ends up to be. Um, so for each this cell, right, um, its anchor box center will be uh, uh, assigned to the center of the cell, and then you you specify the width and the height of the anchor box. In this case, if my anchor box um, Sorry for that. So if my anchor box is, uh, in this case, um, if you specify the width of the anchor box to be one and height of the anchor box to be one, uh, you anchor box exactly overlays with your grid, right? If you specify um, the width to be, uh, you know, for example, two, and height to be two, then your anchor box essentially uh, extends to half there, half there, and then um, it might actually be something like that, right? You specify the shape of anchor box against a certain style, and and if your object end up uh, basically, uh, if you ha if you do have an object that uh, um, that is, um, for example, here. Right, and then that object is uh, uh, will, will have another sort of uh, shape there. It will have um, a, its own. It will be assigned to the nearest cell, um, but it will have a you know it, its its shape, and then uh, uh, later on we'll calculate the. Uh, you you will later on say that uh, uh, you need to calculate something called IOU. Um, intersection of or in, intersection over union, and it actually calculate how much overlapping 
um, you know, uh, between two boxes, and one will be your anchor box uh, shape, the other will be your uh, a true object, and uh, uh, you can Im imagine if there is uh, more overlap here, that means your anchor box is better, um, it is, uh, you know, has a higher chance to uh, detect uh, such object. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, um, go maybe watch a uh, Coursera course from Andrew um, NG. Um, it's a great resource to learn those concepts. Uh, and uh, like what I said, you have five different shapes of anchor box that you pre you will be, it will be predefined, and each of them has this uh, first one is a detector mask. Um, so uh, for each cell, we uh, will only turn. Uh, I mean, if this is one, that means your anchor box uh, is suitable for detecting uh, such an object. And um, if you have a car here, this might be one. In our case, we don't worry about too much of those uh, because we are detecting only uh, two classes but you can see that this uh, you know uh, insects could uh, in different orientations um, so there's still a chance that uh, different shape of anchor box could uh, help you uh, detect um, the object better but uh, without into uh, going into details uh, you know we have to uh, Transfer our box information into uh, you know grid units um, and for and initialize each anchor box uh, in terms of uh, um, you know these objects and you can imagine for the majority part of these grids uh, it will be initialized to uh, just random values and this detector mass will be initialized to zero because it's a don't care right because there's no object here but for uh, the case where there is an object, it will be associated with a, a certain cell. Maybe this one is somewhere around here. Um, sorry, let me pull. Maybe uh, this, this one will be somewhere around, around here. And uh, there will be five anchor boxes associated with it. And there is a specific shape um, that, that, for example, the first one uh, is suitable. It has a largest IOU with uh, this object, then the first one will be initialized to one, and then the uh, box coordinates, um, you know, this coordinate um, of the object will be initialized here, uh, and then the class uh, will be uh, ABW, which is two, right? So that's uh, sort of uh, um, again. This uh, another detail is this is seven. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, when we convert the previous information in here, um, essentially because we have this detector mask, we don't need to reserve the zero for uh, uh, number of uh, no object. Uh, basically, zero will start from uh, PBW and ABW will be uh, one, uh, and and then it's dim dimension seven because uh, the class is uh, one hot encoded. Um, so there is a, a one, two, three, four, five, and this with one hot encoded. There's two class, so there will be um, you know two there. So you have in total seven dimensions. And I I also uh, draw here for illustration purpose. Uh, sorry, I might missed my um, content a little bit, but basically I was talking about this slide and uh, um, about the, you know, uh, the, the, the shape of 16 by 16 by 5 by 7, and I was talking about uh, this uh, 7, uh, it has the class uh, one hot encoded, and then it has the coordinates, and then it has the um, object conf uh, uh, confidence score there. And I was talking about this object might be uh, associated with this style and each style has you know five anchor box and uh, each anchor box uh, you know depending on the 
uh, the one has largest uh, IOU with the actual uh, object uh, box will be initialized uh, a one to the detector mask and then there is this coordinates that will be initialized initialized to the actual coordinates of the object and majority part of this uh, you know image will have a um, uh, you know initialization of detector mask to be zero so the rest of them uh, don't care uh, because there is no object there all right uh, move on so uh, I was already talking about this but uh, as a reminder um, you know uh, the box coordinates and the class index or corresponding anchor uh, will be set to the true uh, object box coordinates in the Euler format um, you know if if there is if there is such an object um, Putting everything together, you know, we have uh, we read the TF records uh, into this raw, uh, you know, train data side. We add a little bit more functionality to retrieve um, the box, resize box information uh, for each uh, uh, sample, and and then um, it will generate this uh, data site, uh, train data site uh, OD, um, and then uh, this function uh, really put that box information in the pixel. Um, uh, and convert it into you know the grid cell units and uh, uh, correctly initialize the anchor boxes uh, um, that, uh, that 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 is the final label um, matching the prediction uh, format of the Euler which is in um, sixteen by sixteen by five by seven um, you know then finally we are ready for the training. Without it going into details, uh, mathematical details, basically the uh, loss of uh, Euler version 2 um, consists of three portions. The first is the um, confidence law, prediction loss. Uh, essentially, uh, it is the first dimension of the, uh, you know, this, this 7, which is predict the object co uh, confidence. Um, if it's a one, it, 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 it's 100% confident that there, there is an object. Uh, if it's zero, it's, it think it doesn't have the object uh, associated with the corresponding anchor box. Um, and uh, um, the Euler prediction really will be something in between, um, while your label is actually have one or zero. Um, but if there is a deviation there, you will encounter uh, loss and then the class loss is essentially uh, classification of the object uh, being detected basically if uh, your anchor detected an object but it uh, uh, here it misclassify it uh, for example this ABW to PBW then you will encounter high loss um, coordinate loss is really uh, you know your prediction of uh, where the where the, the object is located uh, if it's far away from the given, you know, coordinates given uh, true box, then you will encounter um, high loss. So, so don't be confused uh, um, by your prediction uh, and the actual label that that you built, right? So, they are they are two different things. The um, the label is also kind of built in in terms of anchor box because you transferred everything into anchor box but the shape that from the prediction of the model it is actually prediction i already talked about uh, the euro format actually use the uh, center and the weight and uh, height convention right um and the unit is in grid style um and and uh in some cases, uh, if your data is uh, coming in terms of the other convention, which is the corner convention, then you have to sort of uh, uh, transfer your um, your your corner convention uh, conventionally defined uh, box into the center one. 
and all those portion you know has been covered by this function and this is a snip uh, uh, sh snapshot of the uh, training process and you can see the losses keep going down the blue is training loss the yellow uh, the orange is the validation loss and then uh, we uh, also plotted for a specific image at the beginning of the training you can see uh, you know there is certain um, object appears at these uh, locations um, while well, if you plot the heat map of the prediction out of the model it's almost garbage but you can see uh, um, after training for 200 airports is almost uh, uh, showing its capability of detecting um, you know the hot spot which um, kind of uh, shows where the object is located and one more details to to just pay attention to uh, the images in pixel which is 0 to 512 while uh, these two are in grid units which is 16 by 16 right besides training uh, you know you have to do a lot of uh, post processing uh, for if you chose to use ULO uh, one thing is uh, you know this unit conversion because the output of the ULO is in uh, grid cell units it needs to be converted to maybe normalized units which is between 0 and 1 and then you have to convert that to pixel units if you want to overlay your labels in, uh, on top of the uh, actual image that is 512 by 512 if you want to overlay the box to the original image um, that you passed in um, then you have to do further uh, you know coordinate uh, uh, conversion and uh, uh, the box has to be filtered by the confidence score or um, because if you if you plot the uh, output from the ULO directly you will see that there are a lot, lot of bo boxes and a lot of them has this very tiny uh, confidence score um, basically means that there, there is only one percent of chance that ULO think there is an object here so we we have to get rid of uh, the, the box with low scores then you will end up with uh, something like here but another issue happens because in this case there is a lot of overlaps um, of, of the boxes that detecting the same object in order to overcome this issue uh, you will need to use something called a uh, non-max suppression which get rid of the um, overlapping boxes uh, as a brief overview you know it, it will uh, pick the best uh, the box with the best score in this case 0 0.82 and then it will get rid of all the boxes that has a high overlap with this box so that's why um, a lot of them has been you know, getting rid of um, got rid of um, and then it will start picking the next second um, best which is in this case 0 0.81 and a bunch of box will be got rid of um, will be got, got rid of and then um, so on and so forth and the overlap uh, as a reminder it measured is measured by uh, something called in intersection over union threshold so there's two thresholds that you need to set uh, for filtering the boxes that's also the parameter that we were talking about in that overall um, you know the filtering that we are talking about in that overall uh, app diagram we talked about right if the classifier sync um, this image is a positive image then we apply a little bit less filtering uh, because we know there is there are objects but um, if a classifier charge is a negative image we might um, classifier also tell you how much percentage it think it is a negative image we could uh, based on that apply heavy filtering meaning that we filter out more boxes such that uh, there's less counts all right so this is a, a demo of uh, um, the model's prediction on uh, different images and we can see that our model has capability to uh, predict you know different object on a single image um, and uh, uh, also uh, you know for uh, image that taking with different device it, it's 
converted to 512 by 512 and because of that uh, uh, certain image has object that is uh, smaller and certain has image that is uh, object that is larger um, and we are our model has ability to detect uh, those and then for this background image uh, it, it counts for you know zero and uh, zero and then this one is ju there's just a bunch of oil uh, soil um, on the paper and uh, we are able to detect zero here as well but our model is not perfect you can see um, we did miss some something here and we we are missing some object there um, and finally you know uh, this uh, context is really uh, challenging because uh, it's uh, trying to solve a real world problem the data is coming from the uh, farm um, the cotton farm in India and uh, f you know since 2018 and and all the data are just provided by CSV they are not in uh, standard format like uh, uh, you know VOC context uh, so in this case uh, uh, I have to write the whole pipeline and the uh, pre-processing process uh, design the whole um, you know pipeline um, besides training the model writing up the model um, evaluation things like that um, so uh, there are over 700 uh, people uh, or teams enrolled uh, only uh, 146 uh, made the submission and uh, I'm happy that I was able to uh, actually finish this contest and uh, uh, getting some grade um, uh, although I was not able to win any prize this is really an intermediate level computer vision context so I am proud of myself doing a little bit error, error analysis uh, so the yellow model uh, is a version 2 is sensitive to the IOU trash code we, we can see that when the insights really overlap with each other the model had a hard time to uh, detect some of them um, uh, I think uh, one improved idea is to use finer grid uh, basically we have a 16 by 16 grid um, uh, and then uh, we could divide it into for example 19 by 19 or even uh, you know 23 by 23 or something like that uh, in that case it should be able to detect uh, um, the overlapping behavior a little bit better another thing is we need to play with the shape and size of the anchor box right uh, obviously our anchor box might not be uh, fine-tuned uh, to detect certain um, you know object for example this one here uh, we probably want our box to be um, a little bit tighter right right now it's uh, kind of too large so those are the improvement that we can can be done to improve the method if we keep using version 2 YOLO um, another thing is we could start a better uh, model like uh, uh, you know YOLO version 5 um, and um, another thing that is very tricky is this image for example it has a, um, a, a guy wear a pants that uh, uh, has plot of the uh, uh, you know insect on the on the pants uh, it's very tricky image for uh, object detection but when I look at the uh, classification score of this image it actually shows uh, a little bit uh, over 0 0.5 um, um, so a future idea might be we need to fine-tune our model such that uh, uh, when the classifier tells us this is a uh, um, for example only 50% chance uh, uh, it is a positive image then uh, we might want to even filter the score here more aggressively for example uh, only box that is high has a higher score than 0 0.9 survives so in this case they will get rid of all these boxes but it's really a trade-off um, and then uh, we could also explicitly introduce the counting error uh, into uh, the loss function during the training mm, uh, by that I mean uh, the CSV that given that is given by the context uh, it actually also has 
uh, how many counts of ABW and PBW, PBW and ABW as a ground truth. So we did not actually use that information. Um, so those can be actually introduced into the loss computing. So to penalize uh, uh, if if we count, uh, you know, two mining uh, object uh, during the training, uh, it could become a little bit more complicated than what we have right now. But uh, uh, my impression is that it's going to improve uh, this performance a lot. Okay, that's all, and uh, thanks for all the um, you know great work uh, listed here. Um, without them, I won't be able to uh, you know make something work for this uh, for this context. So uh, this this reference uh, listed in um, kind of a timeline order. There's no uh, really mm, you know it's not ordered by importance. Thank you so much.